idea of justice in society, that through an idea of justice or nyay, which is very crucial for an uh, equanimous and egalitarian society, was very essential. And in that context, as we are a public policy school which also roots itself in Indic ideas and uh, ideas which occurred into our civilization and the Bharatiya Sanatana Dharma, we feel that governance and policy are to be looked through that sense. And today's dialogue, uh, Sharad sir and I have been constantly in conversation how to draft it has been drawn in that sense. Uh, now, I, I, my personal areas of interest are education and law enforcement and public policy and I thought policing uh, for many years has been a colonial idea. Many of us would be surprised that policing eventually was developed in India and then it was adopted in uh, UK eventually. So this whole uh, idea of policing is, is very, I, in, in better say of words, is indigenous to India. It, it can be a colonial game. But uh, in that context, uh, I needed to understand that how policing is transcending now just as a function of law enforcement into a public policy state. How, how policing is no, not more a mere bureaucratic but a policy function. And how through that uh, idea of justice can be delivered and manifested. I would request Sir to uh, give his initial remarks and then uh, we have to have a conversation around certain questions and ideas that we want to discuss. Dhaniwad Sushant. And uh, very good morning to everyone here, the distinguished speakers, Shubhiji, Sahilji, uh, all the learners, or reunion ke liye sabhi ex students. At the outset, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude for having been given this opportunity to interact, share my experiences and uh, put forth some ideas that I have been very passionate about, whether in security or with respect to the nation. Having served across the world in the last 28-30 uh, years with the government, something that I have always noticed and wondered and also having been to several uh, you know, institutions of top learning universities, California, Cambridge, Sabi Jage. I've always wondered ki, except in one nation, Baki sub nations may, they speak about their cultures, they speak about their ethos, they speak about so many things related to their civilization, even if they don't have one. Parato kitna civilization mazboot hai. लेकिन उसके बावजूद यहां वो बात नहीं होती थी या उस स्तर तक के नहीं होती थी एंड आई वुड वंडर कि व्हेन एंड इफ दैट डे वुड कम एंड इन फैक्ट इन द यूएस आई वुड आल्सो नोटिस और वर्ल्ड की अच्छी-अच्छी यूनिवर्सिटीज में देयर आर प्रोग्राम्स ऑन साउथ एशिया देयर आर प्रोग्राम्स ऑन इंडिया लेकिन वो प्रोग्राम्स बजाय हमारे सिविलाइजेशन और कल्चर को प्रमोट करने के लिए मेनी ऑफ देम आर एक्चुअली एक्टिंग अगेंस्ट इट which is quite surprising, was quite surprising always for me. And over the years, I've understood why that happens. But the larger point here that I wanted to compliment Rishihud University, the Rashtram School of Public Leadership, and of course, the leadership uh, present here, uh, Arani Suresh Prabhuji, who have this all thought about it, here we have an institution, perhaps one of the very few still in India, that is, uh, that is providing this platform for people like you and me to come interact, learn and share our experiences with the core concept of our sabhita or civilization in mind. Let me also say that uh, uh, the views that I express here are my own personal views. Please do not take them to be views of the government uh, per se because I hold a certain position. And uh, uh, I would like this session to be you know, interactive even after we finish so questions and answers with the Apropoi uh, you know, you, you feel or you want to reach out later also, you know, in terms of, so, uh, my, my bearings would be available here. Hamari to civilization greatness, I, I just want to, you know, add a couple of things uh, before I go on to the idea of justice. If you go across outside India also, or many of you may have uh, seen it already, so the Indian civilization was spread and was spread far and wide 
you can still see remnants of that across the world largely uh, even west asia mein aapko milenge but even more prominently south east asia mein aapko milenge you know countries like where is the largest temple or religious structure in the world duniya mein sabse bada mandir ya koi bhi prakash prakar ka religious structure ka hai it's a hindu religious structure angkor wat not in india but the indian spread of civilization was as far यू गो टू थाईलैंड बैंकॉक एयरपोर्ट पर आप उतरते साथ ही बहुत बड़ी शेषनाग जी की समुद्र मंथन वाला हमारे देश में वाई नॉट वी डोंट हैव दीज दीज यू नो वैल्यूज और एथिक्स और एटलीस्ट नॉट टू दैट एक्सटेंड जो जो दूसरे देश विच जहाँ हमारी सभ्यता पहुंची एंड यू नो इन्फ्लुएंस दैम आई वॉज वंस इन कम्बोडिया एंड there was a vietnamese uh, uh, and cambodian who was sitting there uh, in one of the, just after one of the meetings and they were very surprised that at one point in time india actually supported vietnam against cambodia aur unka ye sochna tha ki how could this happen you know on one side is indic civilization cambodia you, you still can see angkor wat ke alawa bhi bahut sari wahan jagah hai aur aur for that matter indonesia yadi aap jaye world ka second largest temple prambanan Again, is in Indonesia and magnificent. आप देखिए 950 AD में कभी बना होगा. So uh, what the, what what they were surprised was कि how could uh, India support Vietnam over Cambodia? Vietnam is a Sinic uh, civilization country and Cambodia is a Indic civilization country. Or I, I didn't really have an answer to that. Of course, you know there are uh, several theories that go along with it. But one thing I think influences these things is a larger lack of understanding of rashtriyata or or bhartiya sabhyata ya bhartiya aadarsh or values jo hai and i think this is where uh, institutions like the irashram school and the rishi yogi university play a very very important part the idea of justice a police uh, officer hone ke nate uh, uh, let me please also tell you that uh, you know when i look at the idea of justice is just not only from a pure security or police perspective uh i've been fortunate that uh, you know have served across uh, different fields different geographical areas so i can i uh, try to see things from a holistic perspective and i feel that this idea of justice see for any nation to succeed a citizen has to feel that justice has been done in all spheres of life starting with education to uh, his his basic livelihood to uh, you know uh, there might be cases related to uh, individual uh, instances or to any other if this concept of justice does not appeal to him in the sense that it it doesn't appear to him that either justice is being done or it is not only being done but also being seen to be done then the idea of governance takes a back seat so therefore the idea of justice will flow from good governance and i think that is again one of the key issues that uh, the school of public leadership has been rashtram school has been uh, taking up and good governance will flow from good policy formulation and effective implementation of those policies and again that is coupled with proper enforcement of the law and regulations you see what happens hamare yahan kai baar aap log dekhte honge you must be reading that either the enforcement is so stringent that it you know fails to distinguish between what the humanitarian spirit of the law is or there is no enforcement at all now usually in all well governed states where idea of justice is pre predominant the monopoly of violence is held by the state when i say monopoly of violence it doesn't mean ki state ko violence karna hai it only means that the use of force is only authorized for the state not so in india aap har jagah dekhte hain jiski marzi hoti sadak rok ke khada ho jata hai so we have vested interests that override the entire superstructure of the government that is where the idea of justice needs to come in and that is where you know all these things that i mentioned about governance and policy and, and the enforcement will play a part if we have to 
come up with some kind of idea of justice. Not that it's not happening, but there are too many instances of people taking up law in their hands. So I just wanted to open up with these two specific uh, uh, frames. One was the Sapita and the Rashtri uh, thing that I always felt. And the other was the, the justice thing. And you know, uh, Sushant, you worked very hard. All of you have worked uh, very hard for this uh, uh, program. Please feel free to you know uh, ask what must be in the minds of everyone and you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you talked about uh, governance, how it is a very crucial tool, but also I feel that the, the monopoly of violence resting with the state is a key to implement that tool in a better way. And you as a law enfo enforcement officer, I feel, uh, who has a who has a varied experience in counterterrorism, that is one of your specialty areas. I was going through your profile and I feel that has intrigued me the most because the pertinent threats, especially the internal threats that we are facing today, uh, in that context, I would like to ask you that uh, what are emerging strategies the law enforcement agencies are employing when it comes to counterterrorism, and especially in light and regards of the rising fundamentalism that is that we see, the fundamentalist tendencies that we see in the society. Per se, I'm not commenting on any particular religion. It can emate or it can root itself anywhere, but in India or in in, in India-specific uh, state, how do you feel that plays out? So, uh, let, let me say that uh, terrorism per se, you know, is the lack of unanimity on the definition of the word. So, the, the world does, is not agreeing on what terrorism is. And this, you know, it may sound strange to you. But the world is almost 50-50 divided, maybe 40-60 divided. Some people feel you know, some people look at it from the definition that India has. You know, pro producing violence for a particular political aim, disturbing society, hurting others. Some people look at it, some countries look at it from a totally, totally different perspective, which is lack of redressal of grievances and therefore forced action, uh, you know. So, since there is no collective agreement on the definition of terrorism, countering terrorism becomes that much more difficult. And uh, when I, you know, after about 15, 17 years in service, I always wanted to go into the deeper aspects of uh, these things. And I wanted to specialize also, you know, in the, within the police or within the IAS or even within the revenue service or party services. Mein hum log, you know, we tend to just, just pull along uh, with our day-to-day -day and, you know, policy formulation, implementation tasks without realizing that there is much more to be learned and learned and sought from other places. So I always wanted to do this and I therefore specialized in, in very few of us do. Uh, there are officers who are doing it. So, you know, I was one of them. I specialized in security and counter-terrorism. Or even before then, we were dealing with uh, terrorism. In fact, it has come full circle now. In, uh, in uh, 1999, we had the Kandahar hijack. Air India ke plane ko, uh, jab, uh, Indian Airlines tha, actually us and in 2001, I was in the US, we were cooperating, the Indian government and the US government were cooperating on a program which still functions, which started in uh, 2001. Program is known as Anti-Terrorism Assistance Program. So police officers and, and counter-terrorism uh, officers from India and the US would sit together or uh, mein, you know, strategies or how to deal with it, work out. Karte. And one thing that, you know, repeatedly they would stress at that time, you know, this is 2001, 9-11 had not happened. So those people, you know, they would not understand the terrorism. They said, nahi, nahi, aap apne logon ki nahi sunte hai, terrorism. This was pre-9-11. But 6-7 mahine baad mein uske 9-11 happened, the World Trade Center, Pentagon, other things, and the entire definition of terrorism for the Americans has changed. And you have to give it to them, because they have a lot of control, bhi kiya hai, aur sari cheeze, you know, apne desh mein aane bhi nahi hai, etc., etc. But, you know, the larger point is that terrorism or strategies to deal with terrorism have been evolving. As of today, what we see is three or four trends emerging that have, you know, there is of course cross-border terrorism. Every day we see our neighbors uh, in one way or the other facilitating or, or not effectively enforcing the international rules that there are on, on countering terrorism. 
Only yesterday, uh, two major events happened actually. Uh, one was that China blacklist uh, China vetoed the blacklisting of a major terrorist. That affects India. That affects uh, a number of other countries also. So you know those are the geopolitical angles within uh, uh, terrorism or counterterrorism that are taking place. And the other was uh, the FATF, which is the Financial Action Task Force of the of the UN, that has almost now placed Pakistan outside the the, the list, the blacklist. <coughs> Or the grey list. So uh, uh, those trends keep changing at a very fast pace. Also, uh, even though you know, for the past three or four years, we see terrorism in India having been controlled to a very great extent, and that's you know, uh, that it, it's 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 a huge gratitude to everyone. I think the society has played a part, the government has played a part, uh, civil society has played a part, number of agencies have played their own parts. The other emerging trend is uh, radicalization. And radicalization through lone wolves. You know, it's not necessary that organizations like ISIS or Al Qaeda they are working in tandem. They are, but at the same time, that are individuals who are getting radicalized on their own, self radicalization. So this is a worrying, worrying trend, and uh, it's also very difficult to control. Also, cyber attacks, cyber terrorism. Now there was a time when very few countries had this capability. North Korea, of course. Uh, Chances have not been mentioned here. That has uh, capability, and ten other countries. Today, forty countries have that capability. Offensive cyber capability. Imagine if any of these countries say individuals get that capability. So individual hackers have some capability, but not a cyber terrorist. So that is again a worry in the international and national security community. Uh, you know, community about cyber terrorism. You talked about how it's being countered. Now that's that's it has several uh, elements to it, but I think the key one is through the uh, through the cooperation between the public and the government. Now, let me also tell you that uh, you know sometimes we may not realize there is this global terrorism index, and uh, the global terrorism index measures those countries that are most impacted by terrorism. And out of the last 15 years, it it it, it comes out with a Detailed, extensive report about 300-400 pages report covering every angle. And uh, one of the one of the findings, key findings, is the top 10 countries impacted by terrorism. India is the only country in the last 15 years which has been in the top 10 every single year. Not even Afghanistan or Pakistan. So that's the the amount of impact that terrorism has on the country, whether economic, which is huge, or otherwise uh, social and all. So mitigating it involves a number of issues, primarily the understanding within the society and uh, and the responses that a government will take. Maybe if you, if you would like to know further along the line, we can we can discuss these things. From this, one thing I have observed is the changing trend. As a as a '90s kid, I I feel I have seen best and worst of the both worlds because. The emerging generations are becoming distant uh, in a way, and also they are gaining on some some aspects. I'm referring to technology, obviously. And you mentioned lone wolves. So, uh, as a as a law enforcement officer, new challenges are faced by police every day, and one of them, I feel, which has been a prominent trend in the society, is social media and uh, radicalization of youth, which happens through social media. That particularly connects to the lone wo lone wolf uh, concept here. And how how does that work? And uh, how does one look at them? How can one avoid them? And what are your views as a as an officer of the state from the city? So you mentioned social media, extremely important point. And and uh, you know, ten years ago when I was IG intelligence in in uh, Madhya Pradesh, there was only Facebook, which was prominent. You know, Twitter and everything has gained much prominence in the last. So, uh, but Facebook per se could cause us a lot of problems because of you know whatever was posted there. And then uh, these agencies, uh, these corporations that run uh, such social media platforms, since their servers were located uh, located outside India, so there is this huge issue of uh, of uh, uh, you know trying to get information and data from them for uh, etiquette enough for prosecution within the the, uh, the land laws in our country. 
but that has changed over the years and as the technologies of uh, technology has been used or social media has been used by the terrorists so have the governments to some extent kept, tried to keep up pace you know while dealing with them and one of the key issues has been uh, uh, the appointment of nodal officers in each of these private sector tech giants where they, this nodal officer is supposed to you know meet with the security agencies uh, on a regular basis provide information uh, as per the laws of the land and you would have read a couple of years ago there was this huge issue when the private companies were not ready to yeah. to to cooperate with the government on this but now that has changed to a very great extent and that uh, cooperation has occurred let me also tell you uh, or or give you one example from my own uh, work during during the aviation security years and uh, the uh, the mumbai terrorist incident of uh, 2008 november 2008 which was one of the major terrorist incidents that has uh, uh, you know india has faced and uh, i was working with aviation security at that time and we received a, a request from the nsg which is the black cat commandos they wanted space at four indian airports to set up counter uh, uh, terrorism special squads which were to be based on those those four airports and uh, the airport operator uh, the government was the airport operator at that time in all four airports uh, mumbai uh, chennai delhi and uh, you know, kolkata and uh, the airport operator specifically being uh, within the government a public sector undertaking and you know when i sent the file for allotment of land for those counter terrorist hubs in those areas it came back to me and uh, with a note written how much is it going to cost the the company or the public sector enterprise so i sent it to the land department and you know asking for whatever valuations they wanted to do the while came back again with so much you know a loss of so much of uh, crores of revenue for the public sector undertaking i again justified giving up that land to set up counter terrorism hubs in case and, I, and then i you know uh, wrote about a proposed scenario also in which if there was to be a terrorist attack how much of more economic impact would be there not only to the to the company per se but to the nation as well and submitted the file eventually it came back and it was decided that uh, you know no it's just such a large amount and we cannot give land to counter terrorism uh, hubs about a year later mumbai happened imagine if you, if some of you might remember some um, some of you may have been very young some of you might remember that it took the nsg 60 hours to come from delhi to mumbai first a plane was not available and then you know a huge number of logistical issues imagine if that counter terrorism hub was available at mumbai so those 60 hours could have been reduced and a loss of human lives to probably 50 60 100 lives could have been reduced the terrorists could have been nullified much earlier so you know uh, the point i'm trying to make is the sensitivity that has to be there in every individual citizen we we were told ki uh, rash ko ya nation building is the duty of every citizen certainly so and not only in in uh, jal bahut mahatvapurna uh, kshetra hai women's empowerment bahut mahatvapurna kshetra hai uh, biotechnology we have you know eminent uh, people from all these different spheres sath sath suraksha mein bhi har vyakti ko apni jawabdari एज ए इंडिविजुअल निभानी है यदि राष्ट्र को प्रगति पे देखना है आई थिंक दैट इज क्रूशल पॉइंट इन दिस अपार्ट फ्रॉम द सिटीजनरी ऑल द ड्यूटीज दैट वी हैव टू फुलफिल आई फील एन एम्पावर्ड पुलिस फोर्स इज समवर्ड ऑल्सो इसेंशियल and from that uh, i remember during our earlier discussions one thing that is near to your heart and mind that police reforms in india Uh, how do you feel those are very crucial because when i look at all these systems working in a, in, in a interconnected way uh, somewhere do you feel that police reforms in india are imperative uh, thing now they are to be looked at because it has been a topic of, of many years which has which has not been given the kind of weightage or attention because i feel if you don't capacitate the the protectors themselves if you don't arm them enough if you don't enhance or augment their capacities that would really uh, be be a, be a negative point on their performance and how to better them as citizens obviously we are we are duty bound to do rather there is always a conflict about rights and duties citizens are more concerned about their rights rather than their duties 
but uh, as a citizen, as a concerned citizen, I feel how, how, what is your view on police reforms? So, uh, police reforms or anything else that we have discussed so far, you know, the security angle, the counter-terrorism angle, the social media, radicalization, one key point I'd like to mention here, and that again is one difference that I have seen from most Western nations, even Eastern nations, and India. We need a political consensus on key issues. Look, when the rule of rule karte hain, political parties, there is no consensus that the rule of 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 the Tab tak ke, to achieve anything is impossible. And I have seen, you know, uh, uh, in the US very, very uh, closely, also in Western Europe, East Asia maybe, ki on key issues of national uh, security, the parties will come together. In fact, they will present joint bills in the parliament. So ye, this, is, this is crucial for either, either police reforms or, uh, uh, you know, de-radicalization or countering narratives, anything. Having said that, police reforms again, you know, why doesn't it happen? It's something that everyone wants. It's something that is necessary for the country. Or, uh, let's be frank about it, I mean, aap or aap mein se bahut se roh, aise honge ki bhai police se vaastar nahi padhe to achcha hai. That feeling has to go. And that feeling will go only when these reforms are there. And these reforms, what, what are the areas in which they are necessary and why they don't happen? Again, you know, I, I mentioned political consensus. But also there is a resistance not only within the political leadership but also within the police leadership. Again, I want to you know, go back to my own experiences and, and give you two examples. Uh, one is... Uh, uh, related to how uh, you know uh, police reforms are stuck despite even the Supreme Court having given clear judgments and monitoring and, and enforcing things. Or dusra hai ek, you know, jab inse baat chal rahi thi Sushant se and he asked me, ki, during the course of your career have there been instances jab uh, uh, some of the Indic values may have come in uh, use uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your your performance or your non-performance or whatever. And I'm, I'm happy to note that, uh, you know, that, that the, the second example that I wanted to give is actually related to one of the core Indic values of dharma. Or, kaise dharma ka palan karne mein kathinaiyan jarur aati hain, parantu eventually dharma will always win out. So I'll come to that later, but the first one, uh, with respect to, to the Supreme Court judgment, Police reforms, pe se, uh, every every concerned Indian citizen is worried, and therefore uh, a commission was set up in 1977, known as the Police Commission. Uh, it came out with a report. 1980, mein, report submitted. 1980 se leke, 1996 tak ke, there were several different governments. All all ideologies ki government rahi hain. Nobody wanted to enforce that. Then in 1996, an uh, ex-police officer, he filed an uh, appeal in the Supreme Court that the police commission has given report for 16 years. It needs to be implemented in the benefit of everyone. In the police commission ki report, mein, there were several you know, recommendations that uh, tenures should be done, DGP or SP or the commissioner of police should be done, and the transfer of basis should be done, and the civil services, uh, civil authority, you know, having civil society, lawyers, uh, other other parts of the society who will decide on complaints against the police. Se leke bahut sare reforms ke uh, issues the. But the Supreme Court from 1996 to 2004 did not have an opportunity to actually uh, look into the details of this because of other pressing issues. 2004 eventually, uh, uski sunwai shuru ho ke 2006 mein hui, and the Supreme Court ordered that this has to be implemented, the police commission's report has to be implemented, came out. For several years, no state implement. See, law and order is a state subject. You are aware, in our Samvidhan, 
तीन लिस्ट है देर इज़ अ यूनियन लिस्ट जिसमें कि केंद्र सरकार नियम बनाती है स्टेट लिस्ट जिसमें राज्य सरकारें बनाती हैं एंड कॉन्करेंटली सो लॉ एंड ऑर्डर इज अ स्टेट सब्जेक्ट सो पुलिस और ये सब यू नो द स्टेट्स एव दी प्राइमेसी तो नो स्टेट वॉन्टेड टू इम्प्लीमेंट आफ्टर ऑल विच विच पोलिटिकल पार्टी और विच लीडिंग डिस्पेंसेशन वुड वॉन्ट कि पुलिस के ऊपर उनका कंट्रोल नहीं है सी द बेसिक प्रॉब्लम ऑफ पुलिस रिफॉर्म्स इज दैट द गवर गवर्नमेंट विल लूज कंट्रोल ओवर नॉट लूज कंट्रोल बिकॉज इट इज इवेंचुअली द गवर्नमेंट विच विल ऑलवेज हैव कंट्रोल बट देर विल बी सर्टन रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन ऑन द विच ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ विच आपकी पोस्टिंग्स और असाइनमेंट्स डिसाइड होंगे एंड दैट नो बडी वॉन्ट्स यू नो दैट पावर कि नहीं हम शोभित जी को एक्स बनाएंगे दैट शुड रिमेन विथ मी रिगार्डलेस ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ लर्नर एक्स लर्नर वाई लर्नर दैट इज अज रोड डॉक टू implementing police reforms and so it was nobody implemented no state implemented the supreme court got upset and they said ki nahi this needs to change we will monitor so every 6 months every state will tell us what they have done and not only every state will tell us the home secretary and dgp will be present personally to tell us to ye chalu hua but we found a way when i say we found a way means bureaucrats and now many of the states are on on paper implementing it but there are ways where we are still implementing those decisions and still not happening so you know that is the kind of resistance and and personal experience is mein ye aata hai ki jinhone ye appeal lagayi thi supreme court mein one mr prakash singh who was dg up and dg bsf we invited him once to madhya pradesh and and uh, i spoke to him and i said please talk about your experiences and one of the astounding things he told us publicly डू यू इमेजिन कि मैक्सिमम रेजिस्टेंस मुझे दस साल में कहाँ से आया है फॉर फॉर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग पुलिस रिफॉर्म्स फ्रॉम द डी जी पीज दम सेल्व सो यू नो इट्स ह्यूज दिस दिस इज समथिंग दैट दैट सोसाइटी हैज टू टैकल कम टूगेदर एंड टैकल सो दैट वॉज वन बिफोर वी गो ऑन टू दी अदर आई वॉन्ट टू गिव दैट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ माई ओन पोस्टिंग आई वॉज पोस्टेड इन जबलपुर एक मध्य प्रदेश में शहर है लॉन्ग टाइम बैक and uh, i had this uh, you know some of us uh, meet people regularly so you know open hours where anyone can walk in or apni samasya jo bhi hai aap bata sakte ho so one person about 70 years of age at that time walks in aur wo he was very upset ki mera ladka gayab hai aur wo jahan se gayab hai wo mujhe malum hai ki kaun log usko le gaye hain lekin police kuch nahi kar rahi hai so i i uh, made him sit down i rang up the concerned uh, police officer station house in charge And I asked him कि भाई ऐसा ऐसा है आपके पास आए थे बोले सर आए होंगे थाने पे पर मेरी मुलाकात नहीं हुई आप ये प्लीज सेंड हिम आई विल टेक एक्शन ऐसे दो क्या आई सेंड हिम टू द पुलिस स्टेशन दो तीन दिन निकल गए अगेन दिस मैन केम एंड ही वॉज क्राइम आई सेट क्या हुआ आई सेट कि साहब आपने भेजा था लेकिन वो तो कुछ हुआ नहीं उन्होंने लड़के को ढूंढा नहीं और जो लोग मेरे लड़के को उठा के ले गए थे वो अब उसकी मार पिटाई करने के बाद में थाने छोड़ गए मेरे लड़के को ही बंद कर दिए Now this is something that happens in the movies, you know. Wahan, but actual real life me, as is, this is both come. I was shocked, so I said, "Acha, ठीक है, बैठी." I, uh, you know, got him in my vehicle and we went to the police station. मैंने कहा मैं चल के देखता हूँ खुद क्या है. We went there, and lo and behold, certainly he was right. उसका लड़क, उसकी, I could see those, I can still visualize those, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, marks, injury marks on his back. But a severe beating के. और वो थाने में बन. then I really got upset I asked the TI हमारे यहाँ town inspector बोलते हैं एस एच ओ को तो भाई आपने इसको क्यों बंद किया बोले साहब इसके खिलाफ उन्होंने रिपोर्ट करी थी कुछ चोरी वोरी करने की या कुछ फाइनेंशियल फ्रॉड आई सेट इफ देर वॉज अ फाइनेंशियल फ्रॉड यू रजिस्टर काउंटर केस अगेंस्ट हिम और यू कैनॉट बीट हिम ऑफ नंबर वन नंबर टू यू कैनॉट अरेस्ट हिम ऑन विदाउट दी एविडेंस और एनी इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो आई गॉट हिम रिलीज इमीजिएटली एंड आई सस्पेंडेड दी स्टेशन हाउस ऑफिसर and i came back very satisfied ki bhai i did the right thing aur dharm ka palan mujhe karna chahiye tha maine kiya lekin thodi der mein ek phone aaya hamare paas mein to sp saab bol rahe hain phala phala baat karenge grah mantri ji baat karenge us samay jo grah mantri baat hui bole wo aisa aisa hua hai maine kaha ji sir wo aapne usko छुड़वा दिया मैंने कहा जी सर हाँ नॉट ओनली आई इसको छुड़वाया था मैंने जिन लोगों ने इसको मारा था मैंने उसको एसएचओ को ये भी कहा था कि यदि वो शाम तक के अरेस्ट नहीं होते हैं तो आई विल टेक इवन स्ट्रिक्टर एक्शन अगेंस्ट यू तो उसने अरेस्ट शाम तक के वो लोग अरेस्ट भी हुए 
यानी आज के आपने वो अरेस्ट भी करवाया लोग कहा क्यों तो मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया था मैंने खुद देखा है एंड ये हैड नॉट ऑफ इंजरी मार्क्स ये हुआ एंड आई नो द केस आपको मालूम है उनमें से एक हमारा पार्टनर है तो मैंने कहा जी सर मुझे मालूम है लेकिन उसमें कुछ बहुत ज़्यादा मदद हो नहीं सकती है अच्छा ठीक है नेक्स्ट डे आई रिसीव माई ट्रांसफर ऑर्डर तो होता है ये आई मीन दिस इज जस्ट वन एग्जाम्पल आई एम गिविंग बट आई एम श्योर मैनी ब्यूरोक्रैट्स कैन गिव यू सच एग्जाम्पल्स लेकिन जहाँ धर्म की बात हो वहाँ अन्याय ही होता रहे ऐसा जनरली नहीं होता है एटलीस्ट मेरा तो एक्सपीरियंस ही कहता है और वेन दिस हैपन तो द नेक्स्ट डे मीडिया में ये सारी चीज़ें आई कि इसी तरह से ये हुआ है एंड दी ऑफिसर हैज़ बीन ट्रांसफर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट एक तो मीडिया का इतना प्रेशर बना दूसरा बहुत से लोग सड़कों पर निकल आए एंड दैट पब्लिक प्रेशर इवेंचुअली रिजल्टेड इन द ट्रांसफर बींग कैंसल्ड बाय द गवर्नमेंट थ्री डेज लेटर सो वैसा भी होता है तो जो हमारे हमारे हमारी सभ्यता के जो कोर मूल्य हैं चाहे सत्य हो निष्ठा हो या धर्म हो ये आपको हमेशा जीवन में काम आएंगे ब्यूटीफुल एग्जांपल्स। फ्रॉम दैट एक चीज मैं ड्रॉ कर पा रहा हूँ कि पुलिसिंग एंड पॉलिटिक्स आर डीपली कनेक्टेड ऑब्वियस बात है बट वॉट आर योर एक्सपीरियंसिस कैन दीज टू फोर्सेज वर्क टूगेदर और बिकॉज वी आर द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट ऑफ आर डिस्कशन ऑल्सो कि आर दे वेरी इसेंशियल दैट दे वर्क इन सिंक टू डिलीवर सोसाइटी वर सोशल जस्टिस दैन इज मैनिफेस्टिंग स्पेशली ये दो जो धाराएँ हैं पॉलिटिक्स है और पुलिसिंग है मोस्ट सर्टनली देखिए हम लोग लोकतंत्र में वी आर इन अ डेमोक्रेसी एन अ डेमोक्रेसी द पुलिस वर्क अंडर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द पोलिटिकल एग्जीक्यूटिव तो इवन uh, ये सोचना कि साथ में दोनों एजेंसियाज काम नहीं कर सकती हैं इज इज नॉट फीजिबल ऑप्शन और मेरा तो बड़ा फर्म कन्विक्शन है और मानना है कि ये दोनों एजेंसियाँ साथ में भी काम कर सकती हैं और जनता के हित के और भले के लिए यू नो दिस कैन बी डन See uh, whether we are talking about police reforms. What are the core issues on which the police needs to change, or uh, you know, the politicians need to see it from that perspective? Values, kya hai police ki? Uh, behavior towards normal citizens, kya hai? You know, someone entering the police station. I always used to tell as chief of police, every single S H O I would tell in every meeting, ki jo apke thane aara hai, apka basic, basic drastic koon ya basic issue ye hona chahiye apka ki a person feels welcome in the police station and he feels fearless in terms of reporting aur ye cheez ke aapki unke sath nahi honi chahiye jiske sath koi aa raha hai uski to aap aise bhi sunoge jiske sath koi neta aa raha hai it has to happen with jiske sath police station koi nahi aa raha hai akele jo aa raha hai so when well, you know that is what i mean by behavior or values or empathy uh, to the in the larger extent also uh, there is this question of commitment what is happening is ki uh, within the police some of us are committed to the party of the day some of us we are not committed to the law of the land hona kya chahiye ek committed or impartial bureaucracy has to be committed to the law of the land that i think you know movement jab hoga and understanding hogi uh, within the police officers themselves also higher level pe bhi lower level subordinate levels pe and the political class also ki bhai sabke roles defined hain ईच एजेंसी और ईच स्फेयर ऑफ द सोसाइटी हैज़ टू प्ले इट्स ओन रोल तो दो वो अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ योर ओन रोल पॉलिटिशियंस रोल उनके लिए पुलिस का रोल उनके लिए अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द पुलिस ऑन देयर पार्ट एंड ईच अदर्स रोल्स ऑल्सो तब दिस इज दिस इज पॉसिबल टू अ ग्रेट एक्सटेंट दैट साइनर्जी कम्स अक्रॉस एंड द पुलिस ऑल्सो हैज़ टू कीप इन माइंड दैट इवेंचुअली द पॉलिटिशियंस आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द पब्लिक डायरेक्टली police is not perhaps because they are not elected and therefore the control of politicians is necessary and i have seen certain cases where if the, the control is not there there will be a lot of excesses by the police so i think those you know we have to work in tandem we have to work uh, for the benefit of the society and that is possible certainly we would like to have Two to three questions. Anyone from the audience who would like to ask a question? Yeah, yeah. 
has committed that as a that person who started off so they lose they start to question themselves that am i like being just too passionate or emotional is it is it even real this commitment required for the nation so how to, is there a way to, or are there systems existing to rekindle that commitment within the police officials because it is surely required but then this field is so difficult that the doubt will definitely come time and time and again so Hitting the, hitting the nail on the head. That commitment varies, or not only varies within individuals, but also varies within the same individual from the start of service to later. Let me say, uh, you know, on this that uh, whatever commitment, ideals, ethics, values a police officer has or a bureaucrat has, joining the police or any other, uh, you know, career at 20, 21, 22, 23, by which time you have ingrained. Uh, ethics, uh, ideals, morals and values in yourself. Now, if they are very good and you know, Bharati Sabitha ke anusar hain aur sari uh, service ko kis dhashti se dekhte hain? You know, career ko kis dhashti se dekhte hain? Aapki apne job ko kis dhashti se dekhte hain? I always speak this, uh, you know, about speak about this not only to my colleagues, which you know, can make me unpopular with them, but I also speak about this when addressing audiences and I, I you know, I believe youngsters are the key, key to every nation and, and, and youngsters being ingrained in the philosophy of India, Indic civilization are even more crucial. So I always uh, speak about this, that uh, if you have to succeed in life, you need to keep the values that you learned from your parents at heart. Or if this commitment in whatever service you are wavers, it's because Many of us, you know, what are the words? IPS, IAS, IRS, Indian Revenue Service, Indian Police Service, Indian Foreign Service, Indian Administrative Service. The last word is service. What happens is many of us, instead of remembering that last word, treat the job as a career. When you treat the job as, there's nothing wrong in, in you know, in treating your job as a career. But you must also remember the service part. And that is, you know, something that refresher courses try to do. So there is a mechanism within the police also, within the civil services also, that tries to address this from time to time. How successful that mechanism is, remains for, you know, uh, for the institutions to evaluate, see somewhere it is more successful, some states are doing better, some states it may not be so. But there are mechanisms in place. So, see for example, if you combine the offline data with the online uh, big data and now what's coming up is mind reading technologies which people are saying they will be deployed in the airports, railway stations and so on. So do you see a combination of these three in predicting the violence in you know sort of preparing ourselves more effectively to curb it before it happens? The question that you have raised there actually technology per se you know it, it, it can do so many things and it can open up so many avenues and it should so open up so many avenues for the benefit of the society. That's what I believe in. Uh, there was this, there was this famous psychoanalyst. Who, pardon me for you know bringing in uh, that aspect, but I think it's crucial to understand what I want to say. Uh, and he wrote a book, Riggs, Fred Riggs, and he wrote a book uh, and titled it as a Prismatic Society, 1913 Maliki years. And he mentions that there are primarily two kinds of societies. One, you know, it's a continuum. On one kind of uh, end is uh, very lack of development is there. There's no technology. There are no rules and regulations. And and for this kind of uh, society, he gives example of sub-Saharan African nations. Some sub-Saharan. On the other end of the continuum, there is you know Western nations. Technology is highly developed, used for the benefit of people. Rules are there. Institutions of governance and so forth. And then, you know, most of Western Europe, others are there. And then he says most countries lie either near this continuum or that continuum. Then he says there is another kind of society where, which is known as a prismatic society. And prismatic society is one in which institutions of governance are there. But they lack the authority to govern. Not in the law sense, but the physical sense. Uh, technology is available widely but it's not being put to use of the 
general citizens. There are rules and regulations, but no citizen wants to follow when it is upon himself or herself. And in 1913, he is writing that except for India, I cannot find any example. This is a German psychoanalyst writing. Why I brought this up here is, when you talk about technology, yes, there is a lot of technology in the police, in the law enforcement, in the security systems where, uh, you know, uh, in addition to the biometrics which, which came in earlier, or the face recognition and others, and data and evidence that you talked about. You see, every IS or IPS officer has to undergo, and this is apart from those orientation trainings that I was mentioned, is something known uh, as mid-career training. So every three, four, five years, every IS, IPS officer and others have to undergo this. And it's usually in combination with, you know, either Cambridge University or some good Australian University or Stanford, Harvard, Winston, whatever. These are short courses, two-month courses, but nevertheless they are. And as you are aware, and as you are aware, most of you are aware, data and evidence play a crucial part in the rest of the world. However, that is not so in India in terms of decision making. So that is, you know, so all those things are available. But we are not satisfactorily making use of them in terms of prevention of crime, in terms of maintenance of law and order, in terms of providing services to the society, in terms of delivering governance. So, you know, but yes, uh, the final answer would be, I see it happening, it may take time, because that effort is there. There are several officers who are, you know, deeply committed to these things. There are several leaders within the political community who are committed to these. So it's going to happen eventually. It may take time. Um, yeah, there is an informal interaction. I would, I'm sincerely sorry for this, but we'll take questions later on. Uh, any concluding remarks that you would like to make? Because your views are more appreciated. Uh, just a couple of sentences. I know we are short of time, but uh, uh, this is something I really, you know, follow all my life. So I wanted to say, uh, what was happening earlier was, you know, five years down the line, in fact, the new government, one of the major reforms it has introduced, the, the, the current government in the last six, seven years, is that private people can join the government and at very senior levels, which means that you can make a change. You can bring about fresh new ideas, be a part of implementing some ideas that you have always dreamt of as being useful to the country and, and you know implementing across the nation. That has become possible. So uh, think about it, that you can actually play an important role within the government because of the lateral entry system that has just started. Yes, there are very few posts. Yes, there will be opposition. But certainly this option was not available to youngsters of an earlier gener generation. It is now available to you. So please make use of that. And that is necessary because you are coming from a school, you are coming from a university after having ingrained yourself with Indic values. You know, I have always wondered everywhere ki har ki bureaucracy mein unke culture, unke nature ki baat hai, hai nahi. Maybe this is a start. Maybe this is a start and a very valuable start. So uh, please consider that. That's one thing. That is this very famous quote by, by uh, uh, former Nobel Prize winner. Nobel, uh, Sir Ellen Johnson, and he says that uh, the size of your dreams, the size of your dreams must always be bigger than the current capacity you have to achieve them. Only then you are going to. आप आप निश्चित मानिए यदि आपके सपने बहुत बड़े होंगे और आपकी current capability से बड़े होंगे तभी आप उस capability को increase कर पाएंगे उन सपनों को हासिल करने में. And finally, एक बड़ी हमारी प्रिय चौपाई है रामचरित मानस की. And I have always followed the, you know, the, the theme behind it or the message that I want to keep in front of you. And uh, it, it goes something like this. Balkan se hai, tapabal rachai prapanch vidhata. Tapabal rachai prapanch vidhata. Tapabal vishnu sakal jag trata. Tapabal vishnu sakal jag trata. Tapabal shambhu karahi sanghara. तपबल शंभु करही संघारा तपबल शेष धरही मही भारा और उसका मूल तात्पर्य यह है कि तपस्या लगन और मेहनत के बल पे ही भगवान इस सृष्टि का निर्माण करते हैं तपस्या लगन और मेहनत के बल पे ही भगवान विष्णु 
उसका संचालन पालन करते हैं तपस्या के बल पे ही शंकर भगवान में संहार करने की नष्ट करने की शक्ति आती है वो तपस्या के बल पर ही शेषनाग भगवान ने इस धरती का भार अपने सिर पर उठाया था तो जब भगवान को भी आवश्यक है तपस्या लगन और मेहनत तो हम लोग तो सब मात्र इंसान है करके देखिए और सफलता आपके कदम हर कदम चुमेगी धन्यवाद जय हिंद any more beautiful conclusion to this dialogue than ram chandra balas i thank you all of you for your time and energies and i thank you sir all our due thank yous for your time and energies here and it was really an enriching dialogue okay thank you